need for computers such as the one now installed at the University of Queensland is the direct result of man's increasing knowledge of the world in which he lives. As this knowledge grows, men can calculate with greater accuracy and design the things he builds with greater economy. From his records, he can extract statistics which are more meaningful and more useful to him in his field of endeavour, keenly by the better use of figures. Unfortunately, the man behind the desk making calculations is no longer able to do the mechanical work of computing fast enough to keep pace with the demand for figures. The old longhand methods are hopelessly outpaced. Even the slide rule cannot cope with the flood of work now called for. A desk calculator can relieve much of the tedium of calculations, but it still lacks the ability to make decisions which are necessary in the course of a computation. The electronic digital computer has changed all of this. Once the scientist or engineer has written his instructions for a calculation, he can pass them to a computer center, where a skilled operator will punch the instructions in a code of holes in paper cards. The positions of these holes represent figures and letters in a form acceptable to the machine. The cards are taken to the computer room and fed into a card reader. The instructions are thus read into the machine itself. As the cards are read, they are checked for errors. Quite often, errors appear in the original programming, and these are indicated on an automatic typewriter. Once his program has been established, and the figures for his calculations read in, the computer proceeds with its work. When the calculations are complete, the answers are punched out automatically on paper tape. Modern tape punches can deliver the answers at the rate of 400 characters per second. When the punching is complete, the tape is taken to a separate machine where it is interpreted. The results are then printed in plain English. Thus, his original instructions have been coded, taken into the machine, computed, and the results are handed back to him in printed form. All the engineer now has to do is to check his results. Thus, he is left with far more time for creative thinking. When the need for such a computer was realized in Queensland, a joint effort by the university, various local government departments, local authorities, and private industry made this installation possible. There were many potential users, the main roads department, the Coordinator General's Department, Electricity Authority, Queensland Railways, the Forestry Department, and the Department of Agriculture and Stock. It was only by such a joint effort that £150,000 could be found to purchase and house a computer. Late in 1960, space was allocated in part of the main engineering building at St. Lucia and detailed planning of the computer centre began. Tenders were called in January 1961. In the meantime, the building program commenced. In April of the same year, a contract was signed with Australian General Electric for the supply of a GE225 computer. Work on the building accelerated rapidly. At the same time, a General Electric Applications Engineer started training people in Brisbane to use the machine. An unusual structure known as a floating floor was installed in the computer building. This allows supplies of clean, filtered air of controlled temperature and humidity to reach the computer units from below. The entire computer centre was air-conditioned at a cost of some £8,000. As the building neared completion, training was intensified, and eventually there were many trained personnel awaiting the arrival of the computer. The machine arrived late in March 1962. 
and special care was taken in the unloading. It is to the credit of the waterside workers that once they knew the fragile and costly nature of the cargo they were handling, they treated it with extreme care. It is also to their credit that not a single case was bumped or jarred in the course of unloading. These operations were carried out under the supervision of General Electric engineers who checked each item for damage at all stages. This scrutiny continued until the computer and all of its auxiliary equipment had been loaded onto trucks ready for transport to the university at St. Lucia. Unloading the computer at its destination presented some unusual problems. The apparatus was bulky and in some cases extremely heavy. Here again, careful handling was essential. Building operations still in progress added to the difficulty of getting the units into place. As each case was unpacked, its contents were inspected for evidence of damage in transit. Ingress of moisture or of salt-laden air could be particularly damaging to equipment of this type. After uncrating, the units were slid carefully into position over prepared cutouts in the floating floor. Great care had to be taken to prevent ingress of dust and even the highest paid members of staff took their turns at the broom. When the apparatus was in place, the major task of connecting the computer units was begun. Power connections to the individual units also had to be made. At this stage, the floating floor really paid dividends. It made the laying and connection of a large and complex wiring system comparatively easy. When the installation was complete, a final inspection was carried out by Professor Prentice head of the Department of Electrical Engineering and the chairman of the committee responsible for the purchase of the computer. Each item was checked. Even the individual printed circuit boards which make up the computer were closely examined. Trial runs and acceptance tests then began. Soon the special rooms provided for clients were filled with people, most of whom had already been trained while the building was being erected. At last the computer went into operation in April 1962. This is the first digital computer in Queensland and its commissioning marks the beginning of a new era when computers will contribute much to the progress and prosperity of our community.